Hey guys, quickie update on the Emco Turn 140. Um, I have been working on it a little bit. Um, as you might have remembered from previous videos, I have a stepper motor driving that turret. I'm going to be removing that stepper motor and putting a DMM AC servo motor on it. Um, got a little challenge. Um, something I want to try is I'm going to use a, a larger drive pulley here and with a uh, uh, a bushing that locks the pulley to the shaft so I can time it. The idea here is to use the DMM uh, index pulse to time it to to tool one in the turret so that when the index pulse comes around when I home the machine it will set the turret to tool one so that's just the concept I'm thinking about it working on it may try it that's the last thing I'll be doing on the machine um, I've got a panel in the uh, cabinet I mean using the original uh, Emco turn cabinet um, the monitor will be on this side. I'm, I, have a, I had a new cover uh, made for the cabinet. This is just a back panel that holds the components. We'll go around to the back side. Um, the monitor will be flush in the, in the new cover here, uh, along with e-stop and uh, um, USB, that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to put a small keyboard underneath the cabinet that will slide out and then slide back kind of like the old-fashioned old-school keyboard drawers that go underneath your desk but smaller but that's the idea or I use the Logitech K400 plus keyboards with uh, Cosmos silicone skin that way it'll just roll underneath and roll out as needed um, I've got a uh, power on off switch here it's an ABB um, and here's the inside of the cabinet where I'm at so far right now I've got uh, the X and the Z axis uh, Dyne 4 drives in. This is going to be the drive. It's a Dyne 4 drive for the, the turret motor. This drive is going to run on 120 volts, where these two are going to run on 240 volts. The reason being is the motor is much smaller on the turret and can't take the higher voltage. So this one is specifically for the turret and it runs on 120 volts. The reason why I like using the Dyne 4 drives over the Dyne 2 drives is they take 240 volts or 120 volts natively. I don't have to have a power supply. So power straight in, don't have to worry about power supplies. Now that said, I have to use a step down transformer because I got 240 volts coming into the cabinet and I have to drop it down to 120 volts. So I do have a small transformer for that uh, where's it hiding? It's sitting around here somewhere. Um, but anyway, oh, here it is right here. So I've got a, I've got a step down transformer for the turret. I have run most of the cables. Um, they're sitting coiled up here. They go through this arm, and then they drop out right here into the cabinet. Um, I've got uh, a Huan Yang 10 horsepower VFD. This is the one I tested with. I mounted it out here because I didn't want to mount it in the cabinet. And it's going to be kind of tight as it is in there, I think. Um, but I mounted it out here. And there's the signal cable for the, for the inputs, basically. Um, and let's see what else is there to say. Of course, there's the five horsepower uh, motor that I adapted to the machine. And again, here's all the cables. Here's the encoder. Um, you know, everything needs to be dressed out. Obviously, I have to be careful, get things tucked back and so forth, because the axis, when this, when it, when the Z axis move moves, this comes forward all the way out to here. This is the 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 shield, I guess. It's the back panel that you see inside the cabinet. So it it kind of it needs it comes all the way out to you know just this side of the uh, the cabinet. Um, I've got the Dyne 4 AC motors uh, mounted up on the X and the Z. Um, I am probably going to use the proximity sensors that are already on the uh, X and the Z axis to home the machine. Um, if I can't use those, I believe they're 8mm, I will swap them out with uh, something else because I don't know what the signal levels are coming out of it. I'm going to guess it's probably 24 volt signals. 
Um, I have yet to test them. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, and I've got some other video clips that I'll put together, but I just kind of want to give you guys an idea and a, an update on what's going on with this thing. Um, I'm hoping to get uh, the motion controller, and right now I think I'm going to go ahead and put an acorn in it. Um, the other motivation for me to use those uh, proximity switches on the axis is to try and conserve inputs, but... The turret on this thing is 4-bit logic, so it's going to eat up four uh, inputs on Acorn. Uh, Centroid is working diligently to com come up with some sort of expansion module for Acorn. Um, that's that's going to be the challenge, is not having enough I.O. Uh, for this thing. Um, since it's axis driven, I don't need a bunch of, I don't need the outputs, but I need the inputs because we got four bits um, you got four sensors on that turret that uh, tell Acorn the tool position, um, so it can it can set home and and uh, when it's called a dual tool change, it tool changes and so forth. Um, and then you know the other possibility is, uh, it's like I mentioned earlier, is just a servo-driven turret, and if I can time the index pulse, which is Z, on uh, that servo motor to the turret to a one position maybe I can just get by without having to use the 4-bit logic and so once the turret is set to zero or once the turret is set to tool one then the uh, Dyne 4 drive can close the loop and every time there's a tool change uh, it rotates exactly however it needs to rotate and lock and then uh, and then uh, CNC 12, the software can continue on. So there's, you know, the when you have a turret, that adds a huge level of complexity and working all that out so it works reliably is the trick. So anyway, just wanted to provide an update on what's going on, what I've been working on. This and I have some other machines I've been tinkering with. I've got the motors for the Klaus and Candia. They're stacked right there. They need to be mounted up. I've got one of them on the Z-axis. Um, so anyway, just got lots going on. The holidays are upon us. Hope everybody has a happy holiday season for 2018. Um, but that said, um, it's going to be a little bit slow over the holidays, but I'll see what I can get done. All right, talk to you guys soon.